Hi everyone, so here we're going to talk about a special type of isotopes called radioisotopes or radioactive isotopes. You'll need your notes or table N, table N. So we're going to look at the definitions and different trends of radioactive isotopes. So radioisotopes, or again, radioactive isotopes are unstable isotopes, meaning that they're going to spontaneously decay or break down. Um, and pretty much what that means is that we have an example right down here. We have 238-92 uranium. And it's unstable, um, so it's going to break down into another element by emitting a particle. And we'll talk about this in the next lesson. Um, I just wanted you to see that, that they kind of do break down. Um, so the reason that these isotopes are unstable is because they have a um, varied ratio of protons to neutrons. So if you think about this in the nucleus, you have a whole bunch of protons, they're positively charged. You need to have a certain number of neutrons in there to balance out the positive charges because since those positive charges, um, to, since the uh, charges of the protons are alike, they're going to repel one another. So the neutrons are in there just kind of to like buffer or stabilize that nucleus. If you have too few or too many neutrons, then that nucleus will be unstable and it's going to emit um, protons or neutrons from that nucleus. So here are some basic trends. This, um, here we have protons on the x-axis, neutrons on the y-axis, and the red line represents the um, same ratio or one-to-one -one ratio of protons to neutrons. So if you notice below like element 20, um, and you know what element 20 is because of the number of uh, protons right there. Um, so below there you have pretty much some um, stable isotopes. They're not going to be radioactive. So the uh, black dots or black squares are the most abundant isotopes. The pinkish ones are other isotopes found in nature and the blank ones are radioactive isotopes. As you go up, or increase the number of protons, you find that many, there are many more neutrons in the nucleus than there are going to be protons. Um, again, the heavier that uh, nucleus is, the more neutrons are needed in order to stabilize the um, protons that are repelling one another. So here are some basic trends. So some elements have only one isotope, but um, many of them have more than one isotope. Um, the number of neutrons are equal to or greater than the number of protons. And all elements above 83 are unstable. So if you take a look at 83 above here, we have some unstable ones right over there. And when they're unstable, they're going to decay, meaning they're going to release protons and neutrons. So if you take a look here on the periodic table, so let's highlight which ones we have. So above 83, so polonium on, and don't forget your... Um, actinides or lanthanides and actinides over there. The ones I've highlighted are going to be your radioactive ones or your unstable nuclei. Table N actually shows you just a few examples of isotopes that are going to be radioactive or are going to uh, decay. Notice they're not all above element 83. Um, you do have, for example, carbon 14. That's going to be radioactive. Um, it'll decay or um, release something called a beta particle, which we'll talk about in the next lesson. Um, you've got, for example, hydrogen or deuterium. Um, this is a radioactive isotope. And then you have heavier ones, like anything that has a pretty large um, mass number are going to be the heavier isotopes. Again, these are just some of the radioactive isotopes. These are going to be unstable um, because they have a varied ratio of protons to neutrons. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So unstable iso or radioactive isotopes are unstable. Their atomic numbers are, um, excuse me, elements above 83 all have radioactive isotopes, even though the ones below can also have some radioactive isotopes as well. Um, and use table N for some of your radioisotopes. Have a good day.